Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce with Epics at Purdue. In this module, we're going to talk about how the grading process works in Epics here at Purdue. So in the grading overview, the first thing to know is grading in Epics is intended to replicate how performance appraisals work in industry, again, in order to help you prepare to be successful when you leave here. Your individual grade is going to consist of four main areas. First, your mastery of the course outcomes. There are five main outcomes that we look for, and we'll talk about those in the next slides. Next, completion of all of your required assignments. There aren't homework or exams per se, but we do have various times in the year when you have to turn in specific documentation for your team, and you'll need to turn those in during that time. Completion of your professional development hours. So if you're a one or two credit hour student, you have a certain requirement for a number of hours you need to meet. You have to get those completed, and then attendance during your lab time. Um, those are the main things that your advisor is going to look for when they do your assessment. Some of the general grading guidelines. An A is for excellence and work. A lot of people come in and think if they do a good job or really fairly average work, they're going to get an A. And that's simply not the way that it works. You have to do excellent work to get an A in the work both that you complete and that you document. If you don't document the work, we have no way of knowing it was done. A a B grade is a good grade. So if you come to your advisor and you say, I think I did a good job, why didn't I get an A? A good job is a B. So keep that in mind. An A is really for excellent work. A C is for adequate work. So if you think you're just doing an average job, that could be where you would expect to be. And of course, a D and F are, are lower than those. Um, keep in mind that during the grading process, all of these things are in consideration of your year here at Purdue, your major, and how many credit hours you're taking. So an, an excellent bit of work for a first year student is different than an excellent piece of work for a senior. So those five outcomes we talked about, the first of those is your work and accomplishments. We really wanna see that you're making progress toward completing your project. Students can learn a lot without completing their projects, but there's always a limitation there. And by actually moving toward finishing a project, you really learn a lot more along that path. The next is showing that you're learning a design process. We teach a design process in the beginning of the class, and you should follow that process throughout all the work you do, show mastery of that process as you go along. Um, teamwork and leadership. So in all of our teams, there are opportunities to either be a productive team member or a leader in the team, and you'll be assessed on those. Your communication, both with your teammates, uh, your written documentation for the project, and through your design reviews. And finally, critical thinking and reflection. So not only do we want you to do this work, but we want you to, on occasion, step back and think about what it meant and write about that. So those reflections, they're not simply a record of your achievements. Oftentimes we get students who wrote, this week my team wrote this kind of code as a reflection. That's not a reflection. That's documentation of your work and accomplishments. A reflection is really intended for you to think deeper about why you're doing what you're doing and what it means. So there are four sort of main questions that we'll have you answer. Um, usually pick one of them per week and write about it in your notebook. How does this help your career? So as you're doing the work that you're doing, how is it helping you develop skills that will be productive for you later on? How does this affect your stakeholders? So what are some of the ramifications of the things that you're doing? How is this going to help someone? Is this beneficial to society more broadly? How does this tie into your other course learning? So are you um, implementing things that you've learned in your disciplinary courses back into your project or not? And what are some of the ethical implications of your actions? What do those things mean um, on an ethical level? So those are some of the types of things we want you to think about in reflections. You can really take those any direction you want. These are just simply some guidelines that we could give you to prompt yourself. Uh, so Epic's design notebooks, every student will keep their own notebook in Epic's. Um, some of you will use paper notebooks, but most of the teams are now using a Microsoft OneNote notebook. Um, those are all provided for you and are on your SharePoint page. There are instructions for how to access the notebooks on the website. And I will pull that up for you. OK, so we're going to bring in a, a browser here. And again, I'm going to just go to the Epics website and open up the Purdue page. And then if you look here under, um, under Notebook Guidelines, you have OneNote Setup Instructions. And if you open up those instructions, you will see this document and it will walk you through both how to get OneNote on your machine um, and also how to connect to your team notebook for Mac or for Windows. 
Um, so you really want to make sure you follow these instructions completely. Most of the trouble we have with students in their notebooks are because they didn't follow the instructions. Uh, so you'll want to do that. So once you have OneNote set up on your computer and you connect your team's OneNote notebook, you will see something that looks like this. So this is an example notebook. There are a number of tabs across the top. The first is um, your design document template. So this is where your team may keep their design documents. Now some teams have these in Word documents, other places it's the same content, but you can keep it here in your OneNote notebook. And that is a historical record of everything that's done on the project. Um, and that stays with this notebook, this team notebook forever. So the next thing you'll have is the semester template. And this is a notebook that the whole project team will use to keep track of the work that you're doing as a team. So this is a good place to put those progress issues and goals and have a record of them as you go forward. And then the last one, and the one that will be the most important to you, is the student template. So the student template has a number of sections in it. The most important ones are your individual goals, your work and accomplishments, your meeting notes, and your weekly reflection. So when we go to grade you on how much you did in work and accomplishments, we'll look in this tab, as well as your design document and looking at the actual artifacts you've produced through the design process. And when we go to look at your critical thinking, we'll look here at the weekly reflections. And we want to see what you've done week by week and what you've thought about. So when you go to open this notebook, you want to copy the student template to make yourself a, a version of the notebook. So you simply right click on it, click move or copy. You'll then go to the notebook that you want to copy it to. So in this case, the magnifier team and hit copy. You'll then find that copy student template to right click it, click your name and put in your name. And that will then be your tab to use throughout the semester for your own personal work. Now your tab will be public to the rest of your project teammates so they can see the work that you're doing and you can use this as a method for collaborating and sharing information. So that's the notebooks. And that's it for, for the basics of how grading is done in Epics. So in summary, one, make sure to record your work in your notebook. Your notebooks and Epics are just like your quizzes or exams in other courses. You could put in a lot of work and effort studying for an exam in physics and if you don't take the exam, you won't get a good grade. And the same way in Epics, if you put a lot of work into your project, but you don't document it, you're not going to do well. Make sure you write those reflections every week so that we can see your critical thinking. Make sure you make use of the midterm feedback. So your advisor will meet with you sometime around the middle of the semester to give you feedback on your performance. Take those things to heart and make sure you correct the problems that they bring up with you. And last but not least, everyone in Epics can earn an A, and a lot of people do. But those are for excellence and they must be earned. So don't expect that you'll get an A just for showing up.